Welcome to our course, of Robot Structural Analysis Professional 2021. For Nonlinear Analysis of Steel Structures. Level 1. So let's begin with a brief introduction of the main focus behind this particular type of analysis. As well as when and how, is that this should be applied as part of the structural analysis of our models. For instance, one of the structure types which may offer a challenge, analysis-wise, is that pertaining to a steel water tower. This particular structure features both, a concentrated mass on its superior part through which all loads are transmitted, and a considerably high center of gravity. Such condition, along with the lateral forces belonging to wind and seismic loads, produces an inverted pendulum effect over the structure. And although this is an expected behavior, in the particular case of steel water towers, this effect gets magnified due to the movement and subsequent acceleration of the liquid inside the tank. Therefore, determine the adequate types of combinations for accounting for such behavior becomes paramount. Since and as you can observe through the following images, these structures are particularly susceptible to the lateral loads produced by both the wind and seismic events. Namely, that while our model may be correctly calculated for supporting all the corresponding static loads, it may lack when it comes to properly accounting for the lateral forces produced by the wind. And hence, we have made one of the main objectives of this course, to fathom into the mechanisms which produce this behavior, and the ensuing failure of the structural integrity of the model, which simultaneously, will help us to dabble into the subject of how is that plastic hinges get formed across beams, columns and perhaps stiffeners, causing a potential and consequent structural failure. As is by getting familiar with these failure mechanisms, that we could come with an adequate solution for designing and calculating our structural models. And this is precisely one of the main objectives of this course. So and for this purpose, we'll be working mainly with two types of structural models. The first of this, will be a somehow standard steel structure belonging to a midsize building. And that we'll use for observing hows that the behavior previously described may affect this model. While the second one, and as you may have guessed, will correspond to a steel water tower. And so, we'll study the behavior of both these structural models under a nonlinear analysis. With this into consideration and as the first step, we'll start off by performing a response spectrum modal analysis. Or a type of analysis that we have approached during some of our previous courses. Nevertheless, and beyond the basics of this, we'll procure to follow the parameters outlined by the UBC 97 provisions, which at the same time, are in accordance with the ASCE 7 and IBC design codes. So and in order to perform this first analysis, we'll begin by defining the building category and subsequent risk. Taking into consideration of course the seismic importance factor. And having concluded with this first set of considerations, we'll continue by observing a group of coefficients pertaining to the project's site class. Now all these considerations that we'll have to make, will allow us in turn to define the parameters which should be provided to the program, to perform this first modal analysis with whole precision and veracity. The R factor for example, it's a very important parameter which should be carefully defined which in this case, and if we return to the code's provisions, refers to the response modification factor R and that should be taken from the tables provided by the code. Along with the deflection amplification factor C and the overstrength factor, omega. So and from this table, we should determine the proper response modification coefficient R, according to the type of structure being analyzed and use the resultant value, along with those of the remaining factors, for configuring the parameters of this particular type of analysis. So we can then take the first steps into obtaining a safe design for our structure. As a result, this first type of analysis will produce a set of distortions, which simultaneously, should be reviewed against the code. As this will allow us to verify the level of safety of our structural model, in relation to the present seismic loads. Moreover, and since this particular set of provisions may not be available in your country or region, we'll also perform the verification based upon the corresponding response spectrum. So and once we conclude with both verification stages for our design, 
and found as a result that this is safe in relation to the maximum probable seismic loads. We'll continue by verifying that all members or sections within the model are at the same time capable of bearing those same loads. Step which as you may already know, will allow us to perform a more thorough analysis of the structure's integrity. And of course and if deemed necessary, determine which members may require a further revision. Following this verification process, another very crucial aspect of our structure's integrity, is counting with an adequate design for each of the connections existing between those same steel members. In this scheme for example, we can observe the design and resultant safety ratio, for one of the connections corresponding to the many steel frames integrating the structure. Now it's from the adequate design of these type of connections, and their capability for dealing with the resultant static and seismic loads, that we could also achieve a safe structural design. And so, we'll follow this same verification process over both this, and the structural model corresponding to a steel water tower. And once we have successfully concluded this, we'll then continue by performing a nonlinear analysis. Now and for this particular purpose, we should prepare our structure by decreasing its load capacity. So we can then perform an elastoplastic analysis, and obtain the adequate pushover curve. Which at the same time, it's being described in this chart in accordance to the response spectrum profiles. So and through this chart, we can observe the beginning of the spectral acceleration, or that corresponding to the start of the seismic event. In this case, producing an acceleration of 1 meter per second. Followed by the plateau of the envelope. And finally, how's that the acceleration of the seismic event begins to decrease. Moreover and along with this data, we can observe the behavior of the performance curve. Although worth noting, that since we have already conducted the adequate verification of this structural model, the resultant curve is quite stable. The first section of it for example, or that highlighted in orange color, represent the elastic behavior of the curve. While the blue section, it's plastic one. But let's reiterate, this structural model has already been verified against all the design's static and seismic loads. And hence, it's currently displaying a very stable behavior. Nevertheless and as we said earlier, if we wish to find the corresponding collapse mechanism, it'll be necessary that we first decrease this model overall capacity. Of course, and since this first structural model due to its relative simplicity, may not provide us with all the insight that we need, we'll also perform this type of analysis over a second type of structure. Or that pertaining to a steel water tower. Now and with this into consideration, and as part of this process of analysis, we'll take a look at this behavior curve. As this, will allow us to understand how's that plastic hinges get produced across our structural model. So and what we can observe here, is that our structure will first display an elastic behavior. In which the same force exerted over our structure, will produce a proportional displacement. And hence, this will describe the elastic range of the structure's behavior. From that point forward, and once the structure leaves this elastic behavior, it will then begin to display a plastic behavior. Namely that at such point, the resultant displacement will be greater than the exerted force over the structure. And so, this first stage corresponds to immediate occupation. Or what we could describe as minimum structural damages, which still allow for the occupation of the building. Following this first stage, we find that corresponding to life safety, in which and in spite the structural damages, the safety of the building's inhabitants isn't compromised. The third stage, or collapse prevention, accounts for sufficient structural damage that the building needs to be vacated. Now in context of this behavior, if in spite of a subsequent decrease in force, we still experience a continuous displacement, that's when we can find a real risk of collapse. And so, the studying of these collapse mechanisms across the members, and the generation of plastic hinges in the structure, is what will allow us to understand how's that this same structural model may fail. And subsequently collapse. Here for example we can observe once more the elastic and plastic behavior of the structure. And the ensuing structural damage that these may cause over the structure when alpha equals zero. Now this same behavior curve, can be observed in robot structural, along with the formation of plastic hinges throughout the model. And that we'll have to analyze, so we can fully understand the potential failure mechanisms of the structure.
which needless to say, will allow us to improve the behavior of the structural model under such circumstances. Structural model which is our first exercise, will correspond to this type of project. And which features a somehow irregular plant, whose corresponding layout, is found in the list of files included with this course. Therefore let's go ahead, and begin working with this structural model to perform our first nonlinear analysis. See you in the next video.